Welcome back to the GTN show and a record breaking show at that. I'm afraid it's not us per se, but there are a lot of new world records from the indoor 1500 meter track record through to a barefoot ice half marathon. And talking of events, event promoters at the moment are doing all they can to grab our attention so that when they are back up and running, they are at full capacity. And there's been a rather amusing social media spat going on between two major marathons in the UK. I'm going to be covering that for a bit of light-hearted fun. And then I'm going to be discussing what we can do to make triathlon sort of more appealing to the masses and how we can improve the diversity in our sport and really make the most of these new cyclists and runners that seem to be emerging as we come out of lockdown. Following a piece we touched on in last week's show, it got me thinking about the barriers in triathlon and more importantly how we can overcome them. When I chat to friends or colleagues or people who are thinking of doing a triathlon, there's usually a few buts that come up. The common ones are cost understandably, kit, there's a huge amount of kit which links back to cost, the knowledge of the sport, just learning three sports and knowing how they work and how triathlon works is a big thing and confidence which I guess goes hand in hand and I was trying to think about back to when I started triathlon and how I felt about the sport and it was very much took me a long time to actually sign up and get to the start line. I obviously swam and, and ran at a very high level before and I'd cycled for several years before I actually did my first triathlon and it took me to do a swim leg in a triathlon relay and then a few years later I did a cycle leg in a triathlon relay before I went and did my own triathlon and I think for me it was that fear of the unknown of worrying that I might look a little bit silly um, and never having swam in a wetsuit like how does that even work there were so many things that I just didn't know and want, felt like I needed to sort of be at that level before I could actually go to an event and all I can say is I wish I'd signed up sooner and yeah I loved it and I learned so much from the event and obviously I think you guys know that everyone is so friendly and there's a huge amount of knowledge out there that people want to share with you and hopefully that's what we're doing here at GTN now but one thing I wish I had done was joined a club because I think you just learn by osmosis from others and obviously you get that social aspect too. But I worry that if it took someone at my sort of sporting background that long to take the plunge into triathlon, how are we going to get these potential newbies that might be coming into our sport. And I really feel now is an opportunity for triathlon because we are seeing so many people take up running, take up cycling or revisit those sports. And hopefully when pools open around the world again, more people will be going back to swimming. And I think fitness is becoming more important and people need goals. So I feel like triathlon has the opportunity to grow. But what can we do as a sport? Like us here, you guys, what can we all do to really help, I guess, encourage people and open the doors to a wider range of people? I would genuinely love to hear any suggestions that you might have and anything that you think we at GTN can do and hopefully we are welcoming to everybody. But if there's any suggestions, I feel like all of us have a responsibility to try and grow our sport and share it because after all, we get enjoyment from it. Why shouldn't others? Now to kick off Try News with a lot of very fast running. We have quite a lot of world records to cover today. The first one coming from 1500 meter indoor track from Gudef Sege, who smashed the women's record with a time of 3.53.09. And there was obviously a lot of fast running. This was at the World Athletics Indoor Meet in Leuven in France. Uh, Laura Muir, the British athlete, got a British record as well, getting under the four minute mark. And on top of that, we had some very close performances to world records there. Ethiopian Getnewele came within 0.31 of the 3,000 metre world record, which has actually stood since 1998, a time of 7.24.98. And then Jakob Ingebrigtsen, who we've covered on the show before, because him and his brothers from Norway are incredible runners over quite a spectrum of distances. Well, it was 1,500 metres that he was performing in there, set a PB and a European record in a time of 3.31.8. Now, there was also some racing outdoors. It was the Monaco 5K event, which 
you might remember last year, Joshua Cheptegei actually broke the world record there. Well, he was still in good form. He didn't manage to break a record. However, he took the win in a time of 13.13. There was, however, a new world record for the women's 5K set by Beatrice Cepkowicz in a time of 14 minutes, 43. And she actually ran her final K in a split of 2.47. Absolutely smoking. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, we have another world record. This one is the Barefoot Ice Half Marathon. I mean, who knew that was a thing? But it's still an impressive performance. It's Jonas Feldseveldren who has broken the record in a time of one hour, 44 minutes, 58 seconds, taking more than half an hour off the previous record, which was set by Wim Hof, known as the Iceman, back in 2007. So quite a significant improvement there. Well, Jonas is Norwegian. He's obviously used to the cold, although it does sound like he wasn't particularly used to running barefoot in the cold. He'd only got up to 5K in training in these conditions. And during it, he did stop every 5K just to check that his feet were still sort of okay. And apparently towards the last, 16k he's got slightly concerned as his feet no longer had any feeling and we're obviously going rather numb but he managed to complete it and it's just getting verified by the guinness book of records so some very impressive running over the weekend now the last couple of weeks we have mentioned the launch of gcn plus well I'm excited to say it has now actually launched and it is live. So you might have already got in there and seen some of the documentaries that are available. You will have seen our trailer last week on Northland, which is a full feature length video. It's not really following Mark, but it's a completely different story. And all of that is available on the GCN app at the moment. You've got documentaries on there, full feature length films, shows, adventure films, plus live racing, which has just started back up again. And at the moment, they they are offering, GCN Plus are offering a whopping 50% off until the end of February. So you've got less than two weeks left to get your hands on it. So that would be £19.99 in the UK, €19.99 or in US dollars, it's £24.99. So if I were you guys and you're interested in any of those films, I've certainly been enjoying watching quite a few. I would get onto that quickly before the offer ends. On the weekend, the delayed London Marathon set for October 2021 announced the results of its ballot. Now, it's one of the most popular, largest marathons in the world and the focus and the traffic all going to its website with excitement trying to find out if you've got your place for this October caused it to crash and there followed a rather entertaining Twitter spat. So the Virgin London Marathon Twitter account apologised and said that we're working hard to get it resolved. Really sorry those who can't see their results at the moment, but we'll let you know when we're back up and running. Perfectly sort of you know, to the point statement there. Now Manchester Marathon came with this reply. Just to confirm everyone, our website is working if you want a guaranteed place in one of Europe's most popular marathons. Now, I love it, using the opportunity when it was there. Um, well, then a Virgin Money London Marathon came back with this response. Website down, but our course is the right size, dot, 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 with a gif of Obama doing a mic drop. Uh, it didn't stop there though. Manchester Marathon came back with that one. Um, lol, not for everyone, just need a bigger gantry. Now, it might not have made it to worldwide press, but there was someone running as Big Ben, you know, the famous clock tower in Westminster, and they were dressed as this big clock and couldn't get under the finishing gantry at the London Marathon. So that was Manchester going back to London. And then Newport, which is a much smaller marathon in Wales, also got involved. They said, our website works and our course is the right size with a winky face. I just thought that was brilliant that these race organisers are obviously doing their best to promote their events, but they're just giving us a bit of entertainment and the appreciation of the various runners underneath that Twitter feed was certainly very evident. Time for race news now. We're going to kick things off with the epic coast to coast over in New Zealand. It goes from the west coast over to the east coast, covering a grueling 243 kilometers over some very rugged mountains and rivers. It includes running, cycling, and kayaking. Now, the breakdown of the distances it's a 2K run followed by 55Ks on the bike, 33K run back to another 15K of cycling, then a short run transition of a K, 
to finish off with 70 kilometers of kayaking and a final 70 kilometers of cycling. Now to even finish that is quite some achievement and it was obviously another exciting race. Well, Dougal Allen, who's a previous winner and is kind of quite famous for doing very well in this race as well as obviously being a pro triathlete. Well, he did take the win again. It came down to that final cycle. He was having a battle between Sam Manson who ended up finishing second and the women's race was won by Simone Mayer who also managed to battle it out on that final cycling section. Okay, now we have some more racing coming from New Zealand. It's the Xterra Wellington Festival results. And we haven't seen any Xterra racing for quite a long time, so it's exciting to see that back up and off. So this race was a 1K swim, 31K mountain bike, and a 10K trail run. And the elite men, it was Kyle Smith who took the win, Kieran McPherson second, and Sam Osborne in third. And the women's event was won by Maeve Kennedy, and Samantha Kingsford was second. And that leaves our final race of the week, and it was the Z Pro Tri Series, which is back. And if you remember last week, it's back with a difference because we've got running involved as well now. So it's a little bit like a duathlon, but opposite because it's cycling, then running and then cycling. So it began with the TT Hill Climb, which Ruth Astle dominated ahead of Beth Potter. In the men's event, we saw Anthony Costas taking the lead again and really going off from the start. And then for the second race, the run, it came down to sort of tactics again, with six women all just dipping inside the time for maximum points. So it was more of a matter of pacing it to get the most out of it without killing your legs. That included Melly Moore and Beth Potter, who actually took the win, but didn't get any extra points for that. Matt Hansen was comfortable in the run as well, and we had 10 men dipping under that time required for maximum points. So the run not making a huge amount of difference. So then on to the final bike, and it was a crit race, which Ruth Arstall managed to dominate again. Sadly, though, she didn't back it up with that run in the middle, so she's further down the standings. But Lucy Charles Barkley, Meredith Kessler, and Beth Potter had a three-way tie. And the final positions being settled in that order. So it was Lucy Charles Barkley, Meredith Kessler, and then Beth Potter, first, second, and third. Anthony Costas took maximum points throughout, so he won on a very clean sweep. It was Kenneth Van der Dijk, who was second, and Aaron Royal in third overall. It's picture time. Oh yes, we get to share your photos and live vicariously through you guys, wherever you are in the world. I'm gonna start off in South Africa, it looks like. We have this picture from Jenny. Um, she says she's in Struisby, which is the most southern tip in Africa. Wow, that's pretty cool. And that's a picture of her Cervelo P3X. Oh, it's your summer as well, isn't it? So I bet the excitement of the beaches being open is, um, yeah, something special. Now we have, uh, we're back to Wales, South Wales, actually, Merthyr Tydfil, and it's Ponchdilly Reservoir. This has been sent in by Lee. He says a new gravel bike called the On One Space Chicken from Planet X. I'm not sure if he's just made that up. Maybe that's what he's called it. Anyway, he says me and my friend Richard have just bought the same gravel bike. So we thought we'd put them to the test doing almost 4,000 feet of climbing and just over 30 miles on some tough trails. Well, they look pretty happy about it, don't they? And a lovely picture with the reservoir in the background there. Thank you guys. Now we have a Benedict Jose who has sent this picture in from Los Angeles City. It says Angeles City, but I presume that's Los Angeles City and it's his Trek bike. And it's quite a cool story. It's a pain cave project with a swim bike run paintings that have been given to him by a patient that he did surgery on a few weeks before the photo was taken. That's very cool. They look pretty, um, it's a nice clean look in that pain cave and a whopping fan for some hot workouts. Uh, our final one I think of today is from Carol. Now this is from Montreblanc in Quebec, Canada. And imagine you need a pretty good pain cave out there because I think it's quite cold outside. Although interesting, so this is not the pain cave. This is a cave for fun and training. One room for cardio with addition of the new Energy Lab 2.0 strength room. COVID or not, training goes on. And look at that. Everything's been thought of. I'm just admiring these pictures and I'm loving the little touches. What a wonderful space to have to train in. 
and I do like the Kaumanu Highway and the Energy Lab 2.0, both places are on the course in Kona, Hawaii. For those of you who don't know, so I don't know if these guys have been before or they're just having something to keep them focused. Well, lovely trick and I do love dreaming about going back to Kona. Hopefully one day we will get to all be back racing. But for the time being, carry on please sharing your photos, whatever it is you're doing. And if you are racing, you're one of those lucky people that's living somewhere where races are back on, share those as well because we can all live vicariously through you. It's caption time and last week we had this photo from the 2020 Asiago ITU Winter Triathlon World Champs. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Anyway, you guys have come up with some great suggestions this week. To kick us off, we have Jonas Lair. I'm a shadow of my past racing form. Noticing those rather large shadows in the background. Uh, ben Stern. Phew! Almost at 500 metres GTN goal, and it's all downhill from here. It would be when you're skiing, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Uh, Matt Legrand, how do these winter triathlons work? How am I supposed to get in the swim with these poles? I like it. Um, our runner up, though, is Emma W. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Get on up, it's triathlon time. Cool runnings, and that had quite a lot of likes on the comments. But the winner is John Pedersen with this. How I walk after a race. I think there's a lot of us that can relate to that one. John, we'll make sure you get in touch and we will get a GTN cap sent out to you. And for your chance to win a cap, take a look at this picture we have from the London 2012 Olympic Games. I think you guys all know what to do by now, so make sure you leave those suggestions in the comments section below. And that brings this show to a close, but we have been busy. If you follow myself, Mark, or GTN on social media, you might have noticed that we were up on a rather cold hill last week. Well, there's an exciting video coming this weekend. It is the downhill mile. And if you want to know how fast we ran, well, you're going to have to wait. We've also got cheap bike versus super bike coming out, so it's a bit of a whopper weekend. Now, do check out the GTN shop. We've got a link on the screen somewhere now. We've got some brilliant t-shirts in store as well as some new ones coming very soon but we'll let you guys know once we've taken a peek ourselves at those. Give us a like if you've enjoyed it and remember there's a big globe on the screen as well. Give that a hit if you haven't already so you can subscribe and if you want some more GTN videos that are already out there do check out how does running form change your gait. That's on screen right now and you've also got the FTP versus ramp test which Mark and I worked very hard for.